blogger at Melly Sews and designer behind Blank Slate Patterns. And today we're going to show you how to sew a Henley shirt placket. That's the type of placket that's on the shirt that I'm wearing. You can do this on a woven shirt like the one that I'm wearing. You can do this on a t-shirt. All of these types of things you can do a Henley placket. Um, so I'm going to be doing this on a t-shirt today and I've got my materials out here. This is a t-shirt front and then I've got my placket piece. And we're going to talk more about the placket piece in just a minute. But I want you to note before I move the t-shirt that I've got the center fold of the t-shirt. I went ahead and pressed that so that I could see where the center fold is. And that's going to help me line up my placket in a moment. So here is my placket and um, your placket needs to be... Um, five times the width that you want your final placket plus half an inch and then it needs to be the length that you want your final placket plus half an inch. So let me show you how that breaks down. I want my placket in the end to be one inch. So I've got one inch here and then two, three, four, five inches wide and then that extra half inch is actually split onto each side so it's a quarter inch on each side that I've pressed um, under here. And then the length of it is this, here's the length, and then I've got the extra half inches down here. I've gone ahead and I've pressed this placket, and let me show you how this would press. Um, I went ahead and marked those lines first, and then what you do is you press in those side edges that go in half an inch, or sorry, one quarter of an inch for a half inch total, and then I press those to the inside. like so, and then if you fold again and again, you can see this is the width that your final placket is going to be. And these little half inch pieces, I went ahead and after I pressed that, I pressed the whole bottom up, half an inch, and then I clipped on those pressing lines so that they move independently of each other. And you'll see in a little bit why we wanted to do that. So to start with, to sew this placket, I'm actually going to fold it in half and um, then I am going to line up this center fold with the center fold of my t-shirt. Now it bears noting before we start that using a rotary cutter, using a ruler and being really precise about your placket is going to help you as you sew this on. It also bears noting that you can do a placket with knit material or with woven material. Now today I'm using knit, but as you can see, I went ahead and I interfaced this with a knit interfacing. It still has a little bit of stretch, um, but I'm not going to stretch it out of shape. The placket actually, even if you're doing it on a t-shirt, doesn't need to have any stretch because just by its very nature, by the fact that it's slitting into the shirt, it's going to make the neck hole wider and um, therefore it doesn't need to actually stretch. Um, if you are doing this on stretch fabric though, you may want to go ahead and use that interfacing because as you can see from the t-shirt, this, this knit is a little bit flimsy and a little bit fiddly and without that interfacing it would be harder for me to control this placket as I stitch it. Um, and then finally, as you noticed when we folded this placket up, when you are considering fabric for your placket, you want to use something thin. And this is a really thin knit, even with the interfacing it's still not very thick. But all of this is going to get sandwiched to the inside of your placket. So you don't want to have a thick fabric to start out with for this type of placket because you're going to have so many layers it's going to be really difficult to stitch at the end. So going back to, we're going to fold this in half and then I'm going to line up that center fold of the placket with the center fold of my shirt that I pressed in. Once I've got that lined up, then I can go ahead and open the placket. Now I've got it centered on the shirt. I am going to add just a couple of pins to hold this in place here. And I'm putting them right down the center line of the shirt. And then I'll show you where I'm going to stitch on this placket. The markings and the pressing lines actually serve two purposes here. Not only do they show, you know, help us fold it together because you've already pressed, but this is also places where you're going to sew or you're going to be folding. So for this center section here, I will actually be sewing right along my pressing lines around that center section of the placket. 
So I'm going to put it in my machine. I'm using a straight stitch, even though I'm sewing on a knit t-shirt here, because again, this placket does not have to stretch and we don't want it to. We also don't want the shifting that can happen when you get a zigzag stitch. So with a straight stitch, I'm sewing right around this rectangular area. Okay, we've stitched our placket onto the shirt and now comes the scary part because I'm going to cut through the placket and through my shirt. So what I'm going to do is write down the center of that placket area that we stitched. I'm going to cut through the shirt and the placket and I'm going to stop about a half inch away from the seam line that I sewed. And then I'm going to angle my scissors and cut a Y shape. And I'm going to get that Y end as close as I can to that corner stitching line without going through it. So you can see I've got kind of a Y shape there and I've cut through my placket. Now that we have our placket cut, I want to take a second to do a quick press. And I actually did this off camera. But you want to take these two edges where you cut the placket and you want to press them right along that seam line that you sewed so that they will lay like this. And now you can see this is where the placket opening is going to be in the shirt and that's the area that we're going to fill with the rest of these parts of the placket. To continue what we want to do is turn this shirt which is currently right side up. We want to turn it so that it is wrong side up for us to work. And I'm going to move what is now my left side of the shirt out of the way because I want to focus on what is on my right here. And that is the center of the placket. So I've got this little edge folded up. I've got the triangle piece that we cut in the center of the placket. And then I've got, this is actually the edge we just pressed. So if you see, if I put them back together, there's the angle. And I want to take this side of the placket now and I want to fold it and I'm going to be wrapping it around onto the shirt here. So you can see how that, once I have it like folded and all pinned in, you can see how that's going to form one side of the placket where on the front and on the back side, I've covered up that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it and then I'll show you how we will stitch that. So you can see how I have now pinned um, the piece of the placket that I wrapped around. Be really careful down here at the bottom because if you didn't cut all the way into those Y's um, in the corner there, you can get like puckering and bunching. So be really careful there. And um, I'm still looking at the wrong side of the shirt right now. Now what I need to do is I actually need to, with the pins keeping this stable, I need to flip this over onto the right side and I'm going to want to stitch right along the edge here. The reason I'm gonna do this on the right side and I will pull the pins as I stitch is because this is the stitching that's going to show. And this is, um, if we, since we covered the seam on the back side here, if we are precise with our stitching on the front side, we will also make sure to get to the back side. This is again where that first step of pressing the placket is important because that's gonna help you here to make sure that everything's where it should be. So I've got that in my machine. I'm gonna pull my first pin and I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch right down that edge and then I will show you what this looks like. So you can see, and this is the right side of the shirt as in the um, right side of the fabric. Um, that now I've stitched right down the edge there and across the bottom and on the back side, the wrong side of the shirt, you can see how that caught that seam. Now again, on the wrong side of the shirt, I'm now going to fold up the other side of the flap. So this side's a little easier to fold because I don't have to worry about catching that center part of the shirt in the flap. So all I need to do is fold it over make sure that it's covering that seam allowance, and I am going to pin this side as well. So I've sewn the other side of my placket, and you can see that I've only sewn down the one side. I did not sew across the bottom yet, and there's a reason for that. The reason is that I am about to finish the placket here at the bottom, and I want to be able to do that stitching line all at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm overlapping my placket here, one side over the other. 
and this is with the shirt right side up. And now I'm just going to stitch a little square around the bottom here, and then my placket is finished. I am going to place a pin to hold the placket closed, and then I'll stitch. So here is the right side of my shirt, and I've stitched the little square around the bottom of the placket to hold all those layers together. And you can see I've got the front and back edges now that overlap, and I've got my placket opening on my shirt. At this point, once the placket is secured, this is when I can go ahead and go in and make my buttonholes. So I'll go in and do that next. If you want to use snaps, like my shirt's got snaps on it, this is when you would go ahead and install them.